This is the new for 2023 Alfa Romeo Giulia. Now the car behind me is the most popular Veloce model, but this is the top of the range car. It's called the Competizione, and we're gonna get a first go in it right now. Before we do that though, if you haven't already, make sure you get clicking that subscribe button. Now before we hit the road, I just wanted to show you the two main things that have changed on this car's exterior. There's basically the headlights and the taillights at the rear. So now we've gone from having a single beam bulb with some other bits around it. Now we've got this three-part design which has come from the Tonali and it looks lovely, doesn't it? It makes a pretty car even more beautiful. And at the rear, I think it's the same story. It just adds to that design. It really makes this car stand out as, dare I say it, by far the prettiest car in the class. And now in this Competizione range topper, it's not up there with the Quadrifoglio performance cars, but of the normal lot, this is the top car. It starts at over 52 grand, but you get a few extra features. You get tinted windows, for example, slightly uplifted interior, and this exclusive shade of moon gray paint, which has a satin finish. You can get other colors, but it looks really good in this, doesn't it? And of course, it also comes with a few driver-centric features, which should translate very nicely on the road. Let's find out. So it looks great on the outside, but well, does it still drive great? Yeah, Alpha has kept all of the key ingredients that we've loved in the Julia since it was launched in the middle of the last decade now, and they've retained all of the key settings. That means in this Competizione model, which of course is gonna be the sportiest car this side of the proper Quadrifoglio cars, well, it gets two-stage adaptive damping, and it also gets that petrol engine with 280 horsepower at the base level. That's true actually for all of the 2023 range but paired with the eight-speed automatic gearbox with these lovely shift paddles, and also riding on 19-inch wheels, which are wrapped in Pirelli P0 rubber. Well, we've got a pretty sporty setup here, and with that power at the back, delivered via a limited slip differential as standard, oh, and I almost forgot, we still have that carbon fiber prop shaft in the middle. Well, yeah, this, this feels a lot more sporting and a lot more focused than your average mid-size saloon in this class. Oh, it does get up and go when you put your foot down. Yeah, that is quick, actually. Not breakneck quick, but yeah, it shifts. Definitely feels like the sub six second 0 to 62 mile an hour car this is. Quick enough. And then that gearbox is very fast. It clicks when I upshift, and the engine is nice and smooth all the way up to the red line. If I just get around this roundabout here and I start to feel the balance of the car, oh, it's just lovely. Immediately. I feel the car just wants to turn in. It's really neutral when I turn the wheel. There's a tiny bit of body roll because by the way, I'm still in normal mode. I'm in natural, not dynamic mode. So the damping is softer. But then if I just come off the accelerator, I feel the car start to tighten the line. It's so lovely. It feels like a proper sports car. Only really Alfa Romeo and Jaguar seem to get this really natural balance, this equal split between front and rear, so right. And in 2023, when this car is getting a bit long in the tooth, well, yeah, it still feels lovely. Let's click it into dynamic mode, because why not? And we're on a nice twisty road. Now the damping has stiffened up. The ride is really, really good on the softer setting. And it's still nice, even with the damping stiffened up. And let's put it onto some cat size here. Yeah, it's really, really good. There's a little bit of fidgetiness over some surfaces, but it's not harsh or rough at all. They've done an excellent job. <laughs> well, they did an excellent job all those years ago. Through the bend here, so much grip, and just, it's the balance. Brilliant, brilliant car. And that's key in this car because, well, that's what its USP is, and that's what it remains to this day. Because if you jump into the new BMW 3 Series, for example, well, Let's be frank, that thing's got a little bit more low down torque. I think with the hybrid systems now you get across many of this car's rivals, you're gonna have that elasticity from low res, whereas this actually needs to be worked a bit harder. But that is actually what makes it so interesting. I think those of us who really like driving, you don't have to jump into a Quadrifoglio top model to get that traditional Alfa Romeo experience. This thing does offer all of those things. Turn it in, on the brakes, load it up. <laughs> wow, this is fab. It's fab, it really is. It just has such a good front end. Loads of traction from the limited slip differential and then the engine is lovely and smooth in its delivery. It just wants to rev out. It's not crazy, it doesn't thump you in the back, but it's just so nice. God, oh, what a good car. Also, it rides really, really well. I mean, if I click it back now into normal mode and let the damping soften off, it just soaks up the bumps. I do think a smaller wheel would be even better, of course, 
but the 19s look great on this car. They are lovely Teledar Alfa Romeo wheels, so I totally get why you'd want them. And on this Competizione model, well, it's over £52,000, so it needs to look and go in a sporting way, and well, it certainly does. And all right, let's turn things down a little bit. Let's click into the advanced efficiency mode, which is the A on Alfa Romeo's DNA selector. Now it puts everything into the most relaxed setting. I can feel that the suspension is nice and supple. I'm just going over these pretty horrible speed bumps, but the car rides really nicely. It's really soft. It just has this lovely Alfa Romeo finesse about the suspension. And I can see as well the engine, it's shifting up quite quickly through the revs. And while it's not the quickest thing at low revs, it actually still pulls plenty quick enough and I can actually see now the engine will dip and if I'm coasting it will dip it's dipping the clutch actually on the gearbox so that the revs just drop down to tick over so I'm basically getting maximum efficiency when I'm rolling down a hill or rolling on a flat pretty standard stuff but it still does it very well but of course this car is a little bit older than its rivals so it's not all great news it drives and steers and rides beautifully like it always has but there are a few things namely in this interior that do leave it looking and feeling a little bit behind in some areas now we have got new software and new infotainment stuff in this car i mean the screen in the middle still isn't the most impressive but it's got apple carplay and android auto it's quick to respond very easy sharp graphics no complaints there and we have a digital instrument cluster in front of me here which you can customize with your views and i've got it on the classic view which i like very much the steering wheel, the seating position, everything you touch and communicate with is really, really very nice. But, well, put it into reverse, for example, and the reversing camera looks pretty dated. It's a small view, it's not very wide, and the graphics themselves are pretty grainy. And you're just very aware that this is previous generation Alfa Romeo interior tech. I mean, around the center console and the transmission tunnel down here, just you get some of the older features. They all work really well but everything is just set and laid out in the way it's been for the past few years. If you jump into the new Tonale, you can see where Alfa Romeo is going with this stuff and it's definitely a step forward. So yeah, this car is feeling a little bit long in the tooth in some areas and because this Competizione is quite expensive, of course, it's over 52 grand, that will leave some people, especially those who are less interested in handling and more just interested in how the car looks and, well, what they want to show off to their mates. I think those types of people might struggle to justify, especially going for this Competizione model. But for those of us who enjoy driving, well, this is still easily my favorite car in the class. So yeah, it is feeling a little bit dated in some areas and those rivals which are younger are definitely getting ahead when it comes to interior tech. But when it comes to the looks of this thing and how it drives, it's by far my favorite car in the class. It feels like a proper sports car. It doesn't feel like something heavy that's trying to pretend it's sporty. It feels genuinely, genuinely capable and genuinely like an Alfa Romeo. So I adore the thing and I'll let it off for that rubbish and very grainy reversing camera and a few of the other things as well. And of course it gets a few additional features which Alfa thinks will help with residuals, namely that NFT which is taken now from the Tonale and means this thing's data and record is saved digitally. So yeah, there are a few things to tweak it and make it better, but overall what matters most is it remains beautiful and wonderful to drive. But what do you think? Am I going crazy? Am I just too into the Alfa Romeo? And do you think maybe the newer BMW is the better car to go for? Let us know in the comments below. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, do click the thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't already. See you soon.